Uh, yep. So um, I think this is pretty much uh, async the first two. But um, so as we spoke about last time, Yark is 100% of 50% at the moment. Um, so some of the rest of the team are taking some smaller issues like uh, bugs and uh, polish. Um, there's a couple in there for the rest of the team at the moment. So we'll probably keep doing that going forward because um, we don't really want the people working on portfolio management to spend a bunch of time fixing small issues like that. Um, it makes more sense to spread that around a bit more. Um, I set up a thing to automatically create the retro issue, which I don't know if it's working. Um, but then I thought that it might be nice to create the issue earlier because you might think of something during the release. Um, and the reason I didn't do that before with the automated thing was because I wanted to get the list of issues that shipped and issues that slipped. But we could just create the issue and then update it. <laughs> like that, that's like solvable. Um, like just in two different steps. So uh, if you have a strong opinion, add it there and I'll take a look at it when I get back. Um, I didn't add it here actually, um, but I've spoken to a few people. I'm out. Oops. Uh, okay, cool. Pedro was just telling that at the same time. Uh, I'm out from uh, 7th to the 28th of September. So um, see ya after this, basically. <laughs> Um, Ramya, you're next. But, uh, sorry yeah. for interrupting. Uh, sorry, Ramya. Uh, yeah. uh, looking back, Sean, to 1B, uh, I think I missed what you said there. What do you mean you have six weight available from the rest of the team? Well, so if we assume that the person who's working on portfolio management will be 12 weight if they're dedicated to it, but Yaka's at six weight because she's um, working part time, then okay. we have six weight for the rest of the team to spend on portfolio management as well. Um, I think we had ended oh, okay. up putting four or five on or something to the rest of the team. So it was pretty close. Okay. And then just curious, your capacity is that, I know we keep changing, so I wanted to know the latest. Is that um, based on some GitLab thing or is that based on a, uh, like the numbers or is that based on GitLab? Like we have um, some some standard right according to the handbook is that based on that or yes. is it like velocity or, or? I, I don't know if the I don't know if the handbook MR is actually merged but there is a handbook <laughs> MR that Dower created that described this um, but you know it, it, it's the the estimation is deliberately um, lightweight and so the capacity is also lightweight so okay. you know we don't want to like I said we we can. We, and we did go over a bit for some people and under a bit for other people, just based okay. on the sort of distribution of the issues they have. Like if someone's right. got bigger issues, then maybe they can't take as many smaller ones because they'll be dedicated to that one. But if they've got a few smaller ones, then it should be um, easier to get through. But yeah, it's not it's not a science. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that early or later or whatever. But that that's fine. Um, cool. Uh, just suggestion: Should we just put the, the availabilities at the top of the of the thing? Uh, sure, it'll be in my. It's already in my calendar. It'll be in my Slack. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think it makes sense at the top of the agenda. All right. Um, so back to Ramya. Yep. So um, this is about the test plans that I have been writing. So uh, this is just a heads up. Like uh, uh, going forward, for every issue that's going to make it to a particular release, we'll be uh, linking a test plan issue as well which will list down uh, a high level overview of what kind of tests uh, will happen. And also it will um, have the kind of tests that would be automated as well. So as a follow up for that issue, we'll be automating the, those features as well and adding it to the existing test suite. So this would happen. So just wanted to give you a heads up of that. And uh, just today I added the test plan for a couple of issues. And I think uh, I think the developers who are working on those issues and also Victor. So would that be okay or should I uh, mention someone else? Just the developers would be good enough or? You mean to review the, the test plan or, or? Yeah, yeah, to review it. Oh, I, I don't know, what do you, do you think it's for Sean and and Andre, like, I, do do you folks want like a, a rigorous process, or is it just like people looking at it, or um, folks think? I well, think engineers is enough 
uh, at least uh, Vic Victor and engineers because there might be something that missed uh, on the test plan I think yeah I think I think letting the, the person know who's working on it um, and also reviewing the test in their amount would be useful okay so right, I'll I'll just be... mm -hmm. no I, I just want to mention like I, I don't want to block Ramia like on work so I like unless Sean and Andre or other people on this call disagree I think it should be like a like Ramia reaches out to to people she thinks is relevant and then like this call will, will let her know who those people are but I don't think we need a strict process to say like she has to bug people to sign off on a test plan before working on it that type of thing um, yeah yeah that. Sure. I, have, I have a question regarding the test plan so I saw that you created an issue with the test plan for a couple of uh, other issues how how is that issue closed uh, is after you run through that script successfully um, after it's merged so uh, what I'm thinking is like once I have the automation uh, for that written and uh, once it's added to the test suite that would be the end and uh, I would be closing the issue after That's that. That's deliverable. Okay. And will that happen before or after the feature is merged into master? Um, ideally, I would prefer it to be merged when the feature is being merged, but then realistically, I'm not sure if this is possible. So we are just giving it a try and uh, just trying out few things. So, so I, I, I agree. I think the goal is that, but yeah, until yes. we get there, yeah, it's going to be Yeah, first iteration, I think we should, especially since like there's like, at least one issue I, I comment on that that's already merged. So like it already <laughs> breaks the rule. So I agree. We should. But yeah, I think it's a good goal though. It's a good goal. Like once we catch up and we're working on, on new features. And so Rami is, uh, I don't know this. So the, the automation code is that, uh, that's not in uh, GitLab CE or E, it's a separate code base, is that correct? Um, so the feature tests, right? I think it's a part of um, GitLab CE. Okay. Yeah, it's currently the, yes. Yeah, the UI driven tests. And right. uh, we are also planning to have uh, API level tests as well, so. And are those, um, so, so are those checked in, so those are automatically run when uh, the pipeline runs? So, so once those are in, you, you don't have to do any extra work to make sure those tests are having value because every new developer that is trying to merge in code, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yes. And then does your test plan include any manual tests or is that separate? So uh, if there is a manual test needed, uh, we would be adding it as part of the plan as well. But we are planning to keep it as a, at a very minimal, like right. ideally as much as possible we want to automate. Because the, the question then is like, like exactly like Andre's question, how do you, like where is that, how, how is this issue considered closed if there's a portion for a manual part? Like um, do you document it somewhere? And then even if you document it, it's useless unless you actually run the manual test like with like uh, every regression, like there, there should be some schedule. So like, is there any thinking there? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to have an answer yet if, if you don't. Yeah, actually I don't have an answer. Okay. So, uh, so maybe I'll see, maybe for one iteration, if I go through it, I'll get a better idea right. and uh, maybe we can figure Yeah, out. no, no, that, that's good. So let's, let's, I'd say at least for a plan team, let's, the criteria to close, I think that's important, like Andre said, like so we don't have these test plan issues lingering. The criteria to close it is to merge the the automated tests and then any manual things can be, you know, we'll just document, we'll, we'll comment it along in the issue and then as a second iteration, we'll figure out uh, what we want to do in plan and, and across GitLab, how we want to document those and run those because it's, it probably makes sense that it should be separate issues anyways, but right now, for now, I don't, I think we need to add too much complexity to the process. Yeah. Yeah. So, and one more thing is like, we are actually maintaining a master test case uh, sheet. So, which actually has a bunch of all test cases, mm -hmm. either manual or automated, okay. all of that will be recorded in that sheet. And we actually have uh, categorization in that sheet as well. Like uh, which of these tests are automated and which of these are UI automation and API automation or which of these are not automated at all. So that sheet would be like the, place where, where we'll uh, up, keep updating. So maybe uh, to answer your question, that yeah, would no, be the... Right, yeah. There's actually one place yeah. right now. Um, yeah. So two, two quick follow-up, one follow-up comment, one follow-up question. Follow-up comment is uh, eventually somebody will tell us to build that feature into GitLab. 
and then this team is responsible for it. So, uh, so you might as well start creating issues and thinking about that, um, of how to get that, the, the functional, uh, functionality of what you're doing in that sheet into GitLab. Um, but what's mm -hmm. interesting to me is that because that we've never done anything like that, or GitLab doesn't have any type of testing, like suite, like test management or like HPQ, mm -hmm. I don't know what, what those are called. Um, and so, and customers are actually asking for those types of things. So it does make sense that we eventually build it. It's not clear to me when we build it or do we even build like a, a, a small slice anytime soon. Um, but my, so, so that's the comment. My question is, will there be any plans for GitLab to, uh, uh, to use a, a different tool beyond Sheets, Google Sheets? Like, will we ever use a real testing tool to, to document all this? Is there any thought to that or uh, no? There are a bunch of test management tools, but then um, I'm not sure of the future plan. Uh, this is the first step that we've taken to record all the uh, test cases in a sheet. Uh, apart from that, I actually came across a couple of other issues as, as well, which were requested by, I think, customers or users um, about uh, something called the quality center, which right, right, exactly. is something similar to what we are discussing. So, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the future plans. So right. maybe. Yeah. No. No. That's. Yeah. Some something to think about because. Um, I don't know. At GitLab, we never use another tool, or sometimes we just, like some teams do do, but like it seems that every time we use a non GitLab tool, it's going to be like Google Sheets or like Google Docs, yeah. or Google Slides, right? But we don't use a real. Google. Yeah, like we don't use like a like a. I, all I know is HPQC because I, I've used that before. I, I know there's like what rational, there's probably some other tools that, that do like uh, store test plans and, and test scripts yeah. and stuff like that. So it will be in, like interesting if like <clears throat> Ramya, your boss and, and, and then all the bosses' bosses and like wants to use any of those because then we'll, mm. we can actually look at them and then like get some ideas and then um, bring them into GitLab because mm. to me, that's actually better than bringing the ideas of Google right. Sheets into GitLab because there's not a lot of ideas there. But if we're actually using yeah. other tools, we can actually learn a little bit more and it would force us to learn those other tools. Um, yeah. I know we never we, we don't like to do that. I don't know for some, some reason or another, but anyways, that's yeah. side conversation. Oh, actually, um, I've uh, used a tool called Test Rail, uh, which oh, has right. a lot of capabilities in itself. Like uh, it helps you to pick uh, test cases that you want to run and uh, schedule a run and it's like it has a lot of integrations with jira and other third party tools as well so something similar some similar capability in gitlab would be like really awesome great awesome all right yeah. uh, that's all the questions if nothing else we can go to pedro cool yeah thanks Ramya, for explaining that i'm going to take a look at the issue as well uh, to see if there's anything i can uh, help with so <clears throat> I wanted to do this quick uh, demo of uh, a tool, let me share my screen, called Podio. I don't know if anyone has ever used it or not. Um, I just found it out because my wife is using it for a project and uh, I stumbled upon it. I was helping her like configure something here and then I noticed that it has a lot of project management tools here. and. Uh, yeah, I just want to check it out. And I thought it was very interesting the way that they organize all the tasks, how they view uh, the different statuses, their kind of issue board view, their issue list, the team views, private views. I thought it would be interesting to give a quick demo here. Uh, and since this is being recorded, maybe we can then trim this and, and share in the product channel if someone is interested uh, in taking a look as well. So. Uh, here in Podio, they essentially divide uh, each. So they have what they call workspaces. Like this is the company. You can create workspaces inside of your company, uh, which uh, is more or less, it's, it's kind of a group, uh, what we would call groups inside of GitLab. And then inside of each group, you can then add uh, different projects, uh, deliverables, meetings, and you can add other functionalities they call call them apps and you can even duplicate apps so i can have different or uh, deliverables if i want uh, for some reason uh, and they function around this notion of uh, apps uh, and all apps have a very similar uh, 
visualizations. So for example, I'm here in projects and I can even look at projects in a list view or I can switch to card views if I want to see uh, projects in, in the card or in calendar. So they all function in the same, more or less in the same way. Uh, I'm just going to focus this on this one that is called deliverables because it's um, similar to what we do with issues in GitLab. Uh, so the interesting thing here is that when you start out uh, and you don't ev haven't even created anything, the default view uh, is this one called all deliverables. Uh, and essentially it's not a filtered view or anything. Um, it doesn't have any filters applied and you can then uh, start creating, well, let me just minimize this. And you can then start adding issues or in this case, deliverables. Uh, you click here, you add all of the data, you save deliverable. They have this funny thing that you can like create a duplicate from what you've entered here or create a, another one from scratch. Uh, and you can then populate whatever you want. Um, and if you want to have a focused view, so in this case, I've already created this plan view, uh, work in progress deliverables uh, for inside of the team views. And I've also created these private views, which are only available to me uh, called my deliverables and then table. And I'll explain what they are. Uh, so the cool thing is that this all deliverables, which is the default one, you cannot apply any filter to it or the better way to say it is you can apply a filter, but once you apply a filter here, so I go to here and say, for example, I want to see only deliverables that are work in progress. You will notice that the list is now filtered and it says here that this is a unsaved view. So you're uh, prompt to save it if you want, or you just keep this like temporary view of whatever you're seeing. Uh, and then I can click save give it a title, uh, say if I want to place this view in my private view, views or team view, um, or I can just click again, all deliverables to clear whatever filter I had. Um, and you can configure this all deliverables view uh, this, to have a different layout. Right now, this is the board layout. And once I switch the layout, for example, to a table, which is similar to our issues list, it again asks me if I want to save this view. So essentially views are uh, collections of filters that you've applied, but also the layout that you're using. And so like, for example, here in this plan view, uh, I have kind of a card layout. Here I also have a card layout. Here I also have a card layout, but when I, in this one called table, I have a table layout, um, which, has some filters applied to it. So the views also affect which layout you're, you're using. Um, but again, you can quickly s switch between which ones you want and you don't have to save anything. You can do this um, on the fly to activate whatever you want and then you can save it. Um, another cool thing that they have here is the fact that you can define a default view so this one has this little dot saying that this is the default view uh, and I can then drag this view to the top. And so this view that is closest to the top is now the default view. And so for each person that now arrives in this app, they're going to see this view as a default one. Uh, but for me that I'm just like looking around and clicking and browsing through views, if I refresh the page or if I, go back to a different app and then into deliverables, it, um, it respects whatever view I had viewed last. So it will stay at the, my deliverables, even though this is the default view. And this is very customizable. You can even like hide this sidebar if you don't want it. You can show it full screen or not full screen. Uh, and for example, for my deliverables, I can say if I want, uh, how do I want to organize the columns here? So if I go here to options, I can say columns based on status or owner or related project and rules based on owner status or related project. So if I wanted to do, for example, rows based on related project, 
I would see that all of the tasks are in the GitLab Community Edition project. Uh, let me switch this one to a new project called GitLab EE. Okay, this is a GitLab EE project. Okay. Cool. Oh, sorry. GitLab EE. And so if I refresh, I will see that now uh, not only am I organizing the columns on status, but the rows are now based on the project that I'm working on. And basically this is defining columns and swim lanes. And I can do whatever I want here, but notice that it's not saved, the view. So what I have to do is click save and then uh, type whatever name I want and saving my private views, for example, and now it's saved here. Uh, but if I needed to change something simpler here in the My Deliverables, and for example, let me filter this by, uh, I won't filter this by owner, I'm going to filter this by tag, so I only want to see issues for plan and status, work in progress, for example, so now I have two filters. I can then click save as, and it asks me if I want to overwrite my current view or create a new view. Uh, so I'll say override current view, and now this is saved. And I can then uh, make a team view if I want out of the private views or just keep them separate. And so this way of organizing things, I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, and I also have the reports here, which is kind of a dumb report because it's only counts, uh, but it's interesting that they've kind of integrated everything uh, both lists and um, boards and whatever you want and the different views um, into a cohesive um, into a cohesive uh, UI. The only thing I really I'm not that much fan of is the layout being kind of hidden here and also the filters. You don't know which filters are applied. You al al always have to click here to see which filters are applied. Uh, which is kind of dumb if you only have one. That's the same as GitLab, isn't it? If you've got safe filters on the board. Yes, exactly. It's the it's the same, <laughs> which which I'm not a fan of as well. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and this is this is what I wanted to share. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions or comments. Uh, I'll just add that I. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I just add that I, I like the ability to create private and team views and tweak these, and they will remember the settings that it was set on. Like yeah. when you set the table view, like it remembered that view in specific. Uh, I find that pretty neat because sometimes some data deserves a different kind of re representation, and being able to set that in stone for future visits, whether it's teammates or private, I like that distinction, uh, which uh, I. I know that it's in our goal to, to clean that up and to find that, make that more useful, but I like that distinction in particular. Do you know yep. what happens if there are like 50 team views by any chance? Uh, I don't, but uh, it, it would be probably uh, interesting to have some kind of search here. Um, I haven't created that many views, so I don't know. Yeah, but that's a problem that we have today, right? We have so many different boards. Uh, yeah, Pedro, do you mind going back to the, the view with the actual board? Sorry. Uh, so this is the default one. And you can even configure, one thing I forgot to say is that this all deliverables, which is the one you cannot delete, you can delete all of them except this all deliverables. Uh, you can go here to the app settings and configure the default. So yeah, the standard layout. So I can say that this is table, save, and uh, all deliverables is now a table. So you can also set which is the default view you want for this uh, catch all mm -hmm. team view. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So they've combined, which makes sense. So we, we have lists and boards and then they, it's one thing for them. Or, or, or it's just easy to change them. And then what happens if there's multiple columns? 
Uh, multiple no, I columns. Mean, you just add. You just keep adding more and more columns. Oh, I, I think so. Here, uh, let me see if I can. Let me switch this back to column status. Maybe they just get. Um, okay, yeah, so you get these and you have these arrows, which I expect you'd then be able to navigate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here in the table view, you can see this working. So right. I assume that this is probably the same that will happen. Right, right, uh, right. Here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they have a lot, of, what's interesting is they have a lot of, of views, right? Like the same, the same data is shown. Pretty much the same data is shown, but it's just rearranged, which is, which is interesting. Yeah, they, they have this badge view, which is kind of big, right. not that organized view. You, you can sort. You have a lot of sorting options. Uh, right. And these are just big badges. Right. Uh, then they have the table one the card, which is akin to our issue board. They have an activity right. one, uh, just activity of whatever you want. Uh, but this one is not filterable, uh, so right. it might not make much sense. And then you have the calendar, uh, which makes sense for the way that some teams work. Um, with due dates, for example, um, it might make sense. Or like if you try to apply this, so this we're looking at the deliverables level, Imagining right. like they have projects here and you can also do that with projects. So if you wanted to see in calendar view, like how your projects um, were uh, starting to uh, starting or finishing or even in between if we had epics, I think it's a very flexible, I think they have a very flexible system for you to be able to do whatever you want essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it's very complex. I think it's easy to get going and understand uh, what this is all about. Great. Yeah, I, so one thing I can do for whoever's interested, I can, I created this free account and I can invite other people if you just want to uh, like mess with this, uh, it's totally fine as well. So let me know if you want it. Yeah, I'd be happy to play around with it just to, it gets tires. Cool. Yeah, can you invite me too? Sure. Or I, I, I can invite everyone if you don't want, just disregard the email. Uh, that's easier. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Thanks for sharing, Pedro. Yeah. I thought it would be interesting to take this time also to uh, share some things not necessarily concerned with what we're doing right now. Um, I don't think we have anything else in the agenda. So I'll. Uh, I'll let me just add one thing. Uh, sure. I didn't, I didn't add yet. I didn't add any point to me from me because I'm still on the process of finishing up the planning for 11 four Victor. Um, so by tomorrow or something, I'll have a better view okay. of the particular issues and I'll, I'll have some feedback for you. Sure. What I do have is that, um, the issues, issue boards, cars that Constance is working on, uh, Pedro did a review yesterday and it just so happens I might've forgotten to raise that, but Constance is on holiday. It's off this week. Okay. So there might be some constraints there getting that in before the freeze. But I'll, I'll I'll check with him if he can still like fix those those things. But since it's off, um, it might okay. be slipping a little bit. Yeah, I think that one. I I just raised points regarding just the desktop view. I didn't even look at all of the responsive views because it was already so many okay. uh, points to to check. So I'm yeah. Yeah, it was, good to, it was good to start with this issue because we have a couple of redesigns coming and they all have all of these breakpoints that you've right, designed exactly. into the mockups. And I think it's a good lesson to see that we need to account for those uh, on the review, which will always raise a lot of issues. So I'll, I'll, I'll revise the, the weights of the future ones as well. Yeah, I think in this case, uh, let's see how it pans out, but I'm also wary that it probably won't get in. Uh, and... Um, yeah, in this case, it was the way it was. We had the summit and all of that. Um, 
but uh, it's it's um yeah it, it sucks both ways when when the review is uh only so when the mr is only ready to review with so little time yeah uh, i agree for the freeze date uh, but yeah okay but thank you the, for saying that in there oh yes you're welcome but that's it that's all i have for now but i hope to have something by tomorrow and i'll ping you over through the channel as usual nothing else for me so okay, yes, that's wrapping up that's it all right all right so if uh, i'll put this on youtube unless people disagree one two three nope all right